Hello everyone! Welcome to video 2 for Aedor Genesis New Horizons Tips and Tactics. In this video, we're going to try to describe what it means to take an efficient turn with your heroes. And we'll also be covering combat! Let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So, before we can talk about fighting and combat itself, we need to talk about making good choices when it comes to getting yourself involved or engaged with the enemies. All the advice I give you isn't going to matter if you send your level 0 hero in the fight at Dracolich. It's, it's really not going to matter. You can make the best possible decisions and you'll be wiped out without, ever, without the enemy even thinking about it. So, well, we also need to describe uh, some better choices for you here as well, because your level 30 hero doesn't really want to fight four halfling slingers off if he can avoid it, because that's not a really efficient use of your time. So, to start, we need to consider what is an efficient turn to spend with your heroes. I find that you want your hero to gain experience and acquire treasure for your kingdom and themselves every turn if possible. More gold will translate into higher tier structures that you can build, so better units, better equipment, spell schools, better guards of enough enemies, and handling of random events. Gems also help, help you with these things, and is required for certain high level spells to be cast as well. Better gear will translate into your hero being able to handle even better armies of enemy units, being able to defeat other locations and get even more treasure and so on. So you have a spiral happening where the better gear you have, the harder places you can begin handling, and the better gear from those locations you can be getting yourself. Also, I believe that higher tier monsters will give you more experience, so it's best to try to aim for them as well. As such, with this in mind, you never want to lose your hero to a battle. It wipes out all your units and all their experience points, and obviously it delays your hero from gaining anything as well. You will be out money for having to resurrect your hero also, and if this happens in the early game, it will be very difficult to make a comeback from that happening in the early game. If, we're, if it happens in the first, let's say, 15 turns, I'd recommend you just into the past if you're playing the campaign, Submit if you're playing multiplayer, or just give up and start to shard over again if if you're safe scumming. It is it is difficult to recover from that. That money and gems could have been spent instead on other better structures or more units. Now, in addition to not losing your hero, because you always want your hero winning these battles, and you want your hero in battles all the time, you don't want to waste turns with your hero exploring. And you also don't want your hero investigating locations or guards if you can't, if you, if your hero can't handle them. The information is useful when you go to a location, especially if you're not sure what you'll encounter there. Even I sometimes will send my, my hero into a location where I think he can handle it, and then seeing what's waiting, I'll have to retreat. But the, while the information is useful, it's better to be correct in your guess. And again, this is because you don't want to waste turns with your hero. Uh, if you walk into a location and you're like, "Oh, I think that my starting hero can," um, I think my starting hero can handle a skeletal pack, level zero commander with these guys. You'd be wrong, and you'll lose your entire army <laughs> very quickly. So, this is where it becomes a little tricky, because how do you know? How do you know which locations to do? Oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So, uh, in addition to, to being correct in your guess, you, you also don't want your hero to explore. Because while this yields you some experience, and there is a chance to find some loot, it's far better to get it in a guaranteed way. And this is doubly true for your starting hero. You want that hero to level quickly, and find gear and get a good amount of money for you. Because this lets you hire a second hero early on. Well, I'm not talking about builds yet, and what I consider strong or weak. I, I will quickly mention that if you can get a second hero out early, preferably before turn 31, you will be in good shape, having two heroes running around trying to do locations and get you more income. Now, 
How do you know which battles to do? This is a difficult question to answer because until you have enough knowledge about what to expect, your decision making is going to be poor. Do you know what's in a location guarded by lizardmen in a tier 2 province? How about the Alkari guarding a location in a tier 4 province? What if you do what if you explore and find demons guarding a demon gate in a tier 3 province? If you don't know what the makeup of these armies could consist of, then you're going to waste a turn, or maybe not waste a turn, but you're going to have to find out. And that means going there for a turn and seeing what's in the location. Now, this isn't that bad, especially if you're a beginning player, but every turn you're not doing a battle, the AI could be. And considering that this game, the AI can hyper-level itself in a way that you cannot... If you want even a chance to counteract this glitch or bug, you will need to make the best decisions for locations that you possibly can. Also, when you go to a location that's in a tier 1 uh, province, which is to say a province that surrounds your main province, or in a tier 2 province or tier 3 or so on, try to remember what it consisted of. The game is pretty consistent in what it spawns in locations. I know, for example, that a free settlement is likely to have four to six enemies defending it in your first circle of provinces. And it will consist of militiamen, slingers, and spearmen. Probably more militiamen, followed by more slingers, and maybe if you're really unlucky, there'll be multiple spearmen guarding the location. But that's what's there. And I know this because of the sheer amount of hours I have spent playing this game. Unfortunately, there is no great way for me to help you with this, because the amount of enemies you'll fight will be somewhat randomized, as will the enemies that will be there. As such, I can't tell you to, like, do this on turn one, and then do this on turn two. Uh, this is also because if you make a mistake in movement, you can get badly beat up or lose a unit, and then you'll have to come back and rehire another unit to make up for that mistake. There's some amount of variability in the difficulty level that you're choosing as well. I would probably avoid, let's say, slingers on a higher, uh, on a higher difficulty level, uh, both in hiring them and really avoiding taking on halflings, especially on, like, overlord difficulty. So, and of course there's some RNG involved as well. It also depends upon what your hero, spell, equipment, and army composition all consists of. And if I was to try to cover every single type of enemy that you could encounter in every location, we'd be here for like 50 videos trying to cover everything. The only advice I can give you is, well, I can give you some advice. I can, I can tell you what I find to be the easiest provinces to conquer, and in a certain order. Because I know I prefer going after certain provinces to start rather than others. I can also give you an idea of what I consider to be an easy location battle to do. But before I do either of those, I'm quickly going to interject with a structure that I haven't talked about yet, but it's very important to consider. If you plan on building a magic crystal building... I would hold off killing creatures that it can give you as a quest until you build the crystal. It will take me a little bit of time to talk about the magic crystal, but I will sum it up in this way. The crystal can give you a quest to kill early on for provisional guards, shamans, goblins, and brigands. It can also give you undead, uh, skeletons, or zombies and a handful of other easily defeated enemies. But for the most part, if you plan on building that magic crystal, try to avoid fighting barbarians, goblins, and brigands until you build that crystal. Which is to say, look for free settlements first and do those. Okay, now with that said, Oh man, I'm about to give you some, I'm about to tell you what I consider to be easier or harder. Hopefully this guides you correctly. So, I find that fighting for provinces is a little easier than fighting for locations very early on. And I think it's a little more important early on. 
This is because as you begin building buildings in your fortress, you will begin unlocking the ability to build other buildings in your provinces, granaries, and, so, and eventually you'll be able to build like pubs and so on. Here we go, let's you build pubs. These buildings also increase your income and can give you other benefits as well. Getting a stable economy is very important in this game. As we talked about what money gives you, you really want to stabilize very quickly. So as such, you want to be building these buildings in your provinces when possible. And as such, I think it is more important early on to take on provinces rather than doing locations. However, if you don't have any provinces you feel confident in taking, then by all means, do locations instead. Now, okay, here we go. When it comes to provinces, I find the following order to be my preferred. Number one, free settlements. These tend to have slingers and militiamen guarding them, and those are some of the easiest units you will be able to kill. Sometimes they have spearmen, and those guys are a little tougher, but I still think they're the easiest thing for you to fight. Number two, brigands. They're not that difficult, and if you grab a shock spell, you can practically one-hit kill uh, a brigand and or a renegade with a single shock on competent level difficulty. Also, brigands, upon defeating them, means that the province isn't angry at you. Their population mood is still content or quiet. So you don't have to panic as much about them being really angry with you conquering them. Number three is probably a toss-up between halflings or barbarians. You're likely to encounter both of them in one of your surrounding lands. And they're both a little tricky, depending upon how many enemies are guarding it. Four barbarians will be tough for a level zero hero. And six halflings, with a bard among them, will also be tough. Number five, goblins. Sometimes goblins will be a little easier, but the goblins have a trapper with them that can be a nightmare for a level zero hero. This is especially true because goblins are often in swamps. And while they get benefits in swamps, you get penalties. So I tend not to like fighting goblins. I also don't like goblin settlements very much because of the amount of corruption goblins will bring to your kingdom. We haven't talked about corruption yet, and it's not something you have to worry about early on. But I will tend to avoid goblin provinces if I can. With one big exception. Well, actually, there's another reason too, really quick. And that's because goblin provinces have very little wealth. They have almost no gold or gem income in them. But finally, um, well, oh crap, it left my head. One second. Ah, okay, I remember. Uh, a goblins are, are worth conquering if there are many locations in their province. Something else that you should consider, which I didn't even talk about yet, is, uh, the benefits you get for conquering provinces. We've seen that they have gold and gems, but they also have a number of locations in them. This is very important, because if you don't have very many low-level locations you can defeat in your province, you will want to claim provinces around you that have a good many of them, in the hopes that, once, that some of them will be easier. The last location you're likely to end up fighting in your starting provinces that I consider taking, which is really difficult, are Lizardmen. Just like goblins, they will, and unlike goblins, they will always be in a swamp. Sometimes goblins might be in a forest, but lizardmen will always be in a swamp. They are very dangerous in New Horizons, and they will often be guarded by a bog warrior, a tier two unit that you will struggle to down with a tier with a with a zero level tier one army. So I would probably avoid uh, lizardmen as your starting province to capture, unless you are desperate to conquer them. And even then, oh man, good luck. It's, it's going to be tough. You can conquer them once you get level, some levels. A, a bog warrior himself isn't going to stop you with a tier, th with a level 3 army who's got like maybe one more spell, another point of command. But it will still be tricky. Oops, I keep scrolling over to my, my Word document for my notes. Alright, and next, locations. So locations are a bit trickier than, than provinces because, again, it really matters to your, your equipment, what units you have, what you're fighting. This is more important for locations because of how different some of these enemies are. For example, if you took an army of all slingers 
and you go in to fight undead, you're gonna have a hard time killing those skeletons who are basically immune to your range damage. So, it's a bit tricky here. But, in no order of difficulty, I find the following targets to be good for a level 0 to 4 hero to take on. With his army, of course. Undead, Rebels, Goblins, Brigands, a Shaman Horde, Wolves, and Orcs. Even Orcs you'll need to be careful of. If there's a fourth Orc there, that will be tough. Now, Shaman Horde will be tough if there's a second Shaman present. You can also consider Adventurers. But you'll probably lose at least one unit fighting them. But you could consider them to be easy, if not something you can fight right off the bat. Next. Oh, well, actually, I think that about covers the starting provinces and locations for things that you should consider your hero doing. And one more time, in case I didn't make it crystal clear. You want your commander doing battles whenever possible. If your commander cannot do a battle because he is hurt or down a unit, only then should you consider doing something different, in my honest opinion. An exception, uh, one exception for that will be purchasing more equipment from a shop. Maybe there's a battle your hero can do, but you have enough money saved up that you can finally buy that amazing sword of slaughtering. If you can do that, do so. Because it will unlock your hero to, e to do even greater battles. Just remember that that equipment's going to cost you a fair amount to repair as well. Alright! With all that said, I think we can begin talking about combat now. Let's go ahead and step into a province and start it, shall we? I see we have several free settlements surrounding us, so these are all great targets for us to start with. We can get some gold and gems here. Just gold? Hmm. I think we'll come here to this free settlement first. Alright, Gavin, let's start. And we have four enemies, as I was hoping to see. Militiamen, Slingers, and Spearmen. My guess will be that there will be two Militiamen, one Slinger, and one Spearman guarding this province. Okay, everyone. Here we are, and it's time for us to begin talking about combat itself. This... Hmm, I'm going to have to break this up into several different combats to talk about every single thing that affects us. So, the first thing, though, that will always be true whenever you set up your army is this. Pay attention to the terrain. And pay attention to what the enemy army consists of. If the enemy army has set up first, pay attention to where the enemy has placed its units. This is pretty obvious, but I've seen players play and they don't care where their units start, and then they die horribly because they have positioned themselves incorrectly during the battle. For example, if we did, uh, if we did something like this... This is terrible! This is a terrible starting position for us to make, given the surrounding terrain. It would take us too long, or a very long time, to get this, this swordsman in particular up in the battle where he can contribute. And uh, this slinger will be focused down and killed. You'll be forced to move him away or drain his stamina, moving and shooting, moving and shooting instead. Consider So consider this when you play. Pay attention to the terrain. It's very important. And actually, we, we should stop really quick before I begin giving you advice and talk about two things which I find to be true no matter what battle I'm doing. Number one, your objective in battle is to wipe out all the enemies obviously, but to do it without losing a single unit, and preferably without taking any damage. That is the objective. If you cannot meet that objective, try to mitigate the amount of losses you will take. And by all means, try to keep your hero alive no matter what. Um, your hero dies, your, your army is effectively uh, neutered. This is especially true with a commander. You've lost your most powerful unit on the battlefield, arguably, and you will have to pay for his resurrection. Keep your hero alive, especially when starting a shard. I don't know if I mentioned it. I can't remember. It's been like 10 minutes I've been talking already. 
But if your hero dies, and he dies in the first few turns, oh god, you might as well give up on the shard. You can make a comeback, but oh, will it be tough. It'll be like a hundred gold to resurrect him. And even the higher a new hero will be a hundred gold and some crystals. And you don't have that money on the first few turns of the shard. If he dies in the first ten turns, I'd honestly just give up. <laughs> uh, or save scum. Save scum. Go into the past. Uh, I don't consider that save scumming, but, you know, into the past. Or back up your save file and restore it. Something. But God, it's terrible. Number two. I think that's always true when doing a battle. You never want to fight the entire enemy army at once. You don't want every single one of your units to be taking hits. And you don't want the enemy army in your face with all of its units because you that will be an incredible amount of damage. You want to limit the amount of, a, of damage the enemy can do to you on any given turn. So pay attention to the terrain and how it will impact how the enemy army will engage you in battle. If you can position your forces such that the enemy must come at you uh, at, with one or two units instead of its whole band at once, do it. You'll be really grateful and your army will be kept alive and will thank you profusely by doing better, gaining levels, and medals. Alright, with all that said, let's go ahead and begin setting up for this battle. So, I notice that we have a very interesting starting setup here. We have a battle lane here that the enemy can just charge into with their faster units to move it to. The forests here are going to create a, a movement, a kind of like a wall to funnel them in through this direction or this direction. That's useful to know because I'm probably going to want my swordsman positioned maybe like this. Because I don't know where the enemy is going to set up their units yet. Now, they did have a slinger on their side, which means that they're... Oh, well, hold on. Let's stop. Let's talk about benefits for terrain and penalties. Your armies cannot move across, at least their starting armies, will probably not be able to cross lakes. These are effectively blocks. The same thing for mountains. You can't do anything about these. Just know that they're here. If I was to move my, my swordsman here, he can't do anything but just stand there and watch the battle happen. This can be useful for a ranged unit that can't be struck by enemies. If we could get our slinger here and we had a swordsman guarding him, the enemy would not be able to reach him, but they could still pelt him with their own range attacks. Swamps are bad for you, unless you have the ability to ignore them with terrain knowledge. They'll lower your defense by one, and your counterattack by one while you're in one of them. They also cost you stamina to move into, and four movement points to enter as well. The enemy also has these penalties, assuming that they don't have terrain knowledge. Try to avoid entering swamps whenever possible. Hills will require one stamina to move on them, and require three movement to enter. So, it's not as bad as swamps. They also give you one point of defense, one point of counterattack, I think. And they also increase the range of your ranged units by one. Always try to utilize hills with your ranged units if you think it's possible. Just pay attention to what the, where the enemy will place its units. And we'll talk about that now. The AI likes to place any unit with a ranged attack on a hill. My guess is that we'll see the slinger here. And maybe the spearman here. But we may also see the spearman on this hill. And their slinger on this one. Oh, uh, forest by the way. I didn't talk about forests. Uh, forests give you plus two range defense, and it costs you no stamina to enter a forest. So of all the types of terrain, these are probably very good for things like your swordsmen, your spearmen, or your slingers who want to be in the forest to reduce their range attack damage, and it doesn't cost them stamina to move into it. But it will probably end their turn at least early on in the game. Right. So... The enemy AI will put their units when possible onto, onto hills. It will tend to avoid pulling units in swamps unless it must put them in there as well. And that about sums it up for enemy AI placement. It does pay attention to where you place your units. My guess is given the hill over here, the AI will place all of its units on this side to avoid my slinger contributing to the battle. I'll put my hero here. And we'll put our... I think we'll put you here. 
I think let's, yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm placing, let's talk about why I'm making decisions I'm making here. Having a swordsman up front in these two positions allows me to swing them either up or down, depending upon where the enemy AI will place its units. Our spearman has a two movement, so he can quickly kind of join the battle with his spear, helping do a little bit of damage, or I can throw him up front if I need to to help form a, form a defensive line. The same is true about our commander. Um, while he's not the most resilient with two defense and two range attack compared to, say, our swordsman, he can actually take a hit if he needs to in combat, so we'll put him up front. And I want my slinger on the hill for the increased range. I don't think the enemy AI will start here. But let's go ahead and start. So my one more time, my objective is to have all my units supporting each other in the most efficient way I possibly can, and hopefully to use all of my units in this battle. Okay, I was right. All right, Amy, I stood all the units up here, and we've got uh, his his spearman on this hill, his slinger over here. Now, let's talk about the AI a little more, or rather, some other things you should do. When the battle starts, Ying Li gave me some advice: hold down Alt and hover over every single unit. Normally, I would go and right-click on every single unit to check them for certain abilities. You need to know what all these abilities do. This is like playing a game of Warhammer 40k, or War Machine, or um, Hell Dorados, or any other type of miniature game. You, If you want to do the battle as efficiently as possible, you need to understand how your army works, and you also need to understand how the enemy army works. Like, this is a spearman. He's got one single spear. Oh! And this guy, oh, well, he's Rages 3 because he's on the hill. He's a level 0 Spearman, he has no other upgrades, he's normal, and his Spear will cause heavy, will cause the heavy ammo effect, reducing the, range, the unit's range defense by 1 for 3 turns. But pay attention to that, he actually has a range attack, and he will use it if he's able to do so. But if you hold down Alt, you can get a quick synopsis of these units, and any special abilities that they have. This Slinger, for example, is level 5, and he has Stunning Shot, so if he actually does a point of damage to a unit, that unit will lose one point of stamina because of that hit, because of that hit. In any case, I'm checking to see that these guys have no movement shenanigans. You should probably do that as well. If you don't know what the abilities do, by just holding down Alt, right click, and go and look at the ability and understand what it does. Most of the abilities have a good description for them, tell you exactly what to expect. In this case, none of the enemies have a movement of three. Next, pay attention to the ranged attacks of the enemies. This guy's on a hill, and he has a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. So he can strike any of these positions. This means that if I don't move my units up, the AI will move up their unit instead. This could be good. Um, and in fact, because the Slinger is on this hill, I know that if he, he was up 1, his range attack will drop from 5 to 4, so he still won't be able to hit, hit any of my units. So as such, I know that I'm safe moving my, my Swordsman up here 1, and this guy up here 1, and this Spearman up 1. And this guy cannot hurt me whatsoever. He'll have to move 2 spaces and won't contribute to the battle this turn. As for these units, it depends on, the AI will move them depending upon how I move my army. In any case, since I see the enemy AI has all of their melee units here, I want my swordsman up in the battle. Next, my commander is more important to keep alive than my spearman. As much as I would like him to do battle, I don't need him to. So let's move our spearman up one space. Our commander will also move himself up one space. Actually, do I want to do that? I will leave him here. There's no reason for him to do anything, I suppose. And as for our Slinger, well, with a range of five, one, two, three, four, five, we can hit this spot. And any of these. We can move him two to get closer to the enemy Slinger, which may not be a bad idea if we have a Slinger fight, I suppose. But I like to not, uh, not take heavy damage on my Slinger, so he'll stay here and contribute to the range attack against these units. Okay, and Emity has moved pretty wisely. 
It moved its militiamen in such a way that I cannot really attack it with multiple units of my own on my turn. If he had moved this one militiaman two up here, I could attack him with this with this swordsman, move this guy up to defend, move him up to throw his spear, and one, two, three, four, five, kill them with our slinger. But the AI knows that I will, or if the opportunity presents itself, I might try to kill a unit flat out without it being able to do anything to me, and it's moved itself in such a way that I cannot do so. The same holds true for me. Um, I don't want the AI actually attacking one of my units with multiple enemies, if, uh, multiples of itself, if I can help it. If I move this swordsman up and do nothing else, the AI will move this guy one, two, and may, may attack my swordsman or this guy. He will move up one and attack the swordsman. He will throw a spear at the, at the swordsman, and he will throw a sling stone at the swordsman. Maybe that's not so bad, depending upon the spells I've cast or stuff like that. But this early on, I don't want to lose a swordsman. They are too expensive. So here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. We're going to move our spearman back one space. I will move our hero up one space. This swordsman back one space. And we will throw a sling stone at this guy. I don't want to move him off the hill. And remember that moving a unit and attacking on the same turn will consume extra stamina. Normally, it's just one stamina to make an attack or counterattack. There we go. Three damage. It was a certain percentage of his damage. And he's lost a point of morale. Not that it matters. He had, it uh, looks like, 11. And we'll move you actually up here. And let's see what the AI is going to do. My guess is that this militiaman will go 1, 2, and attack this guy. He'll move 1, 2, and attack this guy. And he will move one up and throw a sling stone at one of them while he moves into the woods. Okay, AI moved as I expected. Into the woods gives him more ranged defense, which is good and for him and bad for our slinger. Not that our slinger could reach him anyway. He did make a mistake in that both his militiamen attacked different swordsmen. That was a big mistake because swordsmen have parry. You always want your swordsman to only take one hit from one enemy if possible. This slinger, though, has moved up. And he will attack my slinger next turn. Let's begin attacking him. Nice. A good solid hit. Five damage. I'm perfectly fine with that. His attack damage has now been lowered. I should also point out this as well. Our slinger has a range attack damage of four. But we did five damage to him. I do not understand why this is the case, because it doesn't say there is a damage spread here, but know that there is a damage spread. I wish I could tell you what it was, but I don't understand it myself. Next, how do we want to deal with these enemies of ours? Something you should consider is last hitting. When a unit is the last one to, to hit a unit and kill it, it will gain a small amount of extra experience at the end of a battle. To my knowledge, this experience is not dependent upon the how difficult the enemy was. I think it's a consistent set in stone amount of extra experience, but I don't know what this number is. But as an example, you would get more extra experience if you killed three spearmen than if you had one hit killed a dragon. I think that's the way it works. If I'm wrong, uh, someone in the video's description, uh, the comment section will probably correct me. Now, as for this battle, I, would, I wouldn't mind our commander getting a last hit in, but it's going to be tricky for me to do that if I want to... Oh, actually, it won't be. Okay, let's do this. We will have this swordsman kill this militiaman. I will move this swordsman down one spot. This guy can move one back, and we'll move our commander up to, and he'll kill that militiaman. My guess is that he will move one space up and throw his spear, but he could run up and attack this militiaman. The slinger will totally attack our commander, or he'll move down one and attack our slinger. Okay, that's good. We move you up one space, you up one space. Now Slayer can kill theirs. You can move two, and you can move one down here. 
and I don't think we'll even attack with our swordsmen. With an attack of six, this guy will only will do one damage to our swordsmen. Or no damage, which is even better. Let's throw that spear. There we go. We'll weaken him further with a sling stone. And now the question is, do I want another kill for our commander? Or do I want one of my swordsmen getting some experience points? Look, let's, let's do it with the swordsmen. Alright, well done. We've won and taken a province. Let's do another one, shall we? Galvin's army looks like it's pretty much intact. We've taken almost no damage. So I think we could go right away into another province and do another battle. Remember that you always want to be killing things if you possibly can. Engage in combat as often as you can. Okay, five enemies this time. Militiamen, Slinger, and Spearmen. And Gavin's is saying the forces are pretty much equal. I would agree with that. I think they are. We have five units. They have five units. Our units are slightly hurt, but I think we can win. Okay, as always, we look at the terrain to start. My guess is that the enemy will set up its units over here to start. Kind of no matter where I put my army. This is because of this area down here. This is a choke point, and the AI does not like these very much. The enemy can only come at us one at a time if it decides to put all of its units down here. Granted, it will have the extra defense here of the forests, but it won't really want to do that. I think the enemy will probably put its units up here. In any case, where should I put myself? Well, I see I have swamps here, and also there's a line right down this side which forms a wall to slow the enemy from reaching me. I see a small clearing, and then another kind of half wall. So if the enemy tries to get through this woods, I can plink it as units enter this open space without forests here, and if it wants to rush me, it will have to come down this way. I think our slinger should start on the hill. One, two, three, four, five. We can take advantage of the fact that if any enemies come down into this spot, we can hit them. And we'll do this with my army. I am heavily suspecting the enemy will be over here. I want my swordsmen ready for the combat. In case I make a mistake, though, our spearmen can swing down this way to begin staving off their attacks when our swordsmen try to join that fight. Okay, they did set up kind of where I expected them to, to be set up. Okay, and the units have nothing spectacular. This guy, though, has a range attack of five, not four, and one more ammo to his name. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I think I will just move up my two spearmen. I'm sorry, my two swordsmen, just like this. Normally, I'd love to move this guy up two, but then this slinger can move up one and throw a sling stone at him. I don't want that happening, so I'm not going to do that. We will instead move our spearmen uh, just one space. We can move you one space, and we will actually move our slinger up two. He'll leave the hill where I can actually use, use him over here if I want to. Okay, so far so good. Let's move our swordsman up into the woods. He can only be attacked by this guy, because if they want to actually throw spears at him or sling stones, I'm fine with that. But being he can only be attacked by one, we can utilize his parry in the most efficient way possible. My other units, I think I will just... Oh, well, we could move up one here with our swordsman, I suppose. We could move our slinger up one and throw a sling stone at their slinger. But then we're going to take a hit back, and I'd rather their slingers waste their shots on my swordsman instead. Let's move him up. Sure, we'll move him up one space. No, let's, let's leave him here. If I leave him here, he'll move, probably move out one and throw his spear at this guy, which I'm going to be... Oh, oh, actually, Tim, if you want that, move him here instead. Because then you can take the forest next turn. 
Let's do that. Everyone else stays put. All right. Good use of our turn. Now, our commander's vulnerable to this guy. So I have to be careful of that. I think we'll move our swordsman up into the woods, and he will be attacking him this turn. Our spearman can move one up, and we can... Uh, we may kill this guy with this spear. We got unlucky and did not do so. There we go. We'll kill him with this guy with our slinger. He'll move up one. And do I want to attack this guy? I think I do. Now his parry has been used, I believe, for that strike. So I don't think he'll... I think he doesn't have it active at, any, at the moment. Oh, actually, no. No, he still has it active. Okay. Um, let's attack this guy. Now he's thrown his spear. I could charge him with my commander if I wanted to. But we would take a 7 damage counter attack. He would probably move... Uh, he'd probably attack our commander and we'd have to take all this range attack damage. Let's see what he decides to do. I'll leave my commander here and see if he decides to attack my commander. Actually, that's dumb. That is dumb. Let's attack him. I mean, it took only two damage to counterattack because his counterattack got lowered after we hit him. And I forgot that we have two points of armor as well. Yep, taking big damage though, Tim. That's not what you wanted to have happen, but it is what I thought would happen. And it's over. Well done, guys. Unfortunately, that movement cost me hit points. I suspected he would come under a heavy attack. I was hoping maybe they would divert their attacks against someone else, but they did not do so. Plus one command. And I think we will grab... Oh, these are all... Very... Oh, what should you take on your hero? Everyone, this is impossible for me to give you any advice about. It all depends upon the situation, what army you are running, and what you think you want for your hero's build. In New Horizons, almost any hero type is viable, especially on Expert or Below, and most of the skills are also useful as well. You seem to be careful that you don't take, like, all range attacks if you're just running an all, like, Necromancer Undead army, which is not going to help them very much. And, for example, you don't care about morale if you're running Undead either, because they're immune to it. So keep that in mind when making selections. Always try to take abilities that help your army. Uh, well, if, especially if you're using Commander, or your hero specifically for the build you have in mind. Now, for Gaven, we took quite a bit of range damage there. Let's grab defensive tactics for plus one range defense to our whole entire army. Our here our oh, as for level ups for your units, it all depends upon what you want them for. In the early game, my slinger is not likely to run out of stamina and may run out of ammo. We'll grab plus one ammo for him. This is a bit of advice I can give you when it comes to leveling a unit. Do you take the morale plus two? Or health point early on. In the early battles, I find that I don't lose much morale unless you fight something like Narnas or Demons or something which actually has an ability that lowers your morale. But taking big hits, you won't take too many of them. And if you do, you're going to lose that unit anyway. So I'd wait on taking the morale plus two uh, until later in the leveling process. Hit point or attack. An interesting choice. I will take plus one attack here. Now, I did very poorly there, and we are badly hurt. So I need to rest. This is not going to be helpful to me, especially given all the advice I've given you. However, we did level up, and we get a point of command. So I have an excuse to head back home anyway, to grab another unit. While heading back home, I think we'll go ahead and build another building to help us out. And we'll actually build a library. Next, this gives me access to spells. Always remember, this is just general advice for heroes. Never leave your hero, let, don't let your hero leave your province without taking spells. Just, just don't do it. It's, it's really not worth it. Always take something to help out your army if possible. Now, for other buildings, I think we'll build ourselves a slinger school. And we'll go ahead and hire another slinger. And, even though our hero is badly hurt, 
we're going to do another fight. We'll go over here and do this free settlement, and then we'll switch to different types of battles. And we'll see how well we do there. Which is to say, we'll load a different type of game. The enemy is doomed. Now, there are six enemies here this time. In the worst case scenario, there'll be multiple spearmen. But I think Gavin can still do this fight. Alright, I kind of like this setup. So once more time, looking at the terrain. I'm going to put my slingers in the forest. Because the enemy probably has slingers of their own. And we'll keep our hero... Uh, Probably in dead in the center. Ooh, all your units are still hurt. Keep that in mind. This might have been a mistake to try. Let's do this. My weakest unit is in the middle because my other units can support him. And my slingers in the forest to reduce the damage they'll take from the enemy range attacks. Let's start. Only one slinger and four militiamen and one spirit. That is a very nice sight to see. Enemy will not be very strong. I do want their slinger off that hill, so I'm not going to move towards him. We, you have, you do not have a uh, force march. All right, well let's start by magic sparking something. I think we'll start by attacking their slinger. Almost no damage done. Just two. Okay. Well, it's something. Oops, that's a mistake, Tim. You said you were going to move up. Don't move up. Everyone else stays put. Actually, I think I do have to move a bit. Oh, no, we'll stay put. Okay. We will move our wounded swordsman down up spot. Since I don't want him being attacked by all of these units, this swordsman will also move up one spot. We will go ahead and Magic Spark. The Slinger again. His hit points still will not reduce by half, so he still inflicts the most damage he can. We could move this guy out one and throw a Sling Stone at him. It may actually kill him. It's very tempting. But if I want to do that, I'll need to move this Spearman here. Or our Slinger will take um, a hit from this Militiaman. We also might not, get, we might not get lucky enough to kill him. So I think instead, our Slingers will focus on killing or damage, heavily damaging that jerk. And he move one down. He'll, he will be attacked probably by this Spearman, by this, by this Militiaman, and probably also this guy. But I think I'll be fine with that. A very good combat round. The Slinger went for our Slinger, who in the woods is benefiting from, obviously, that extra range defense. These guys attacked, well, a single Swordsman each. That's uh, kind of a shame for them, because uh, their parry saved them from any great damage. The only problem I've got is this Militiaman. He can move two and attack our Slinger. i love to kill their Slinger, though, if I could. It's going to be very tricky to do this in a way I like. I think... I think we have to let this Slinger live for one round. Let's throw a spear at this guy. And then two Sling Stones. Down over here. I think we have the strength to kill. Yes, we do both of those enemies. And I don't want our commander hit. He will move one space back for protection. Alright, this is over. Well done, army. So, the only question now is who wants the last hits? He is not in a forest. Let's have you get a kill. We'll weaken their spearmen to the point where we can easily kill him with a unit. Oh, didn't quite kill him there. Stamina, because again, I don't like taking the morale for the initial level, at least. And we won another battle. Good for us. Alright, everyone. Let me switch uh, save slots. Okay, everyone. 
Here we are in combat against a group of brigands, with a new hero, or a scout this time around, and his army of light spearmen and a slinger. We're fending off, as you can see, against two brigands, a thief, and a renegade. The first thing you want to note when you're setting up second is pay attention to the location of any of their range units. If they can, they will move up and shoot you the first turn, because that's an amazing thing that they can do. A renegade in this instance, for example, he's got forest walk, which means he can walk into the forest and still shoot. Or rather, I'm sorry, uh, terrain knowledge forest. Next, um, he gets extra defenses if he's shooting us in the forest, so retaliating in kind is not a good idea. We won't be doing as much damage as he'll be doing to us. As such, we want to place our units in such a way, in this instance at least, that we cannot take any range damage from this guy. This will cause him to move two spaces up towards us instead. Something else we should pay attention to is what the terrain looks like for this battlefield. I see an open area here and here. So my guess is that this brigand, for example, won't move just one space. They will probably move him first two spaces like this or two spaces like this. This brigand will probably move two spaces up. The thief will probably move two spaces up here, and the renegade will move one two spaces if I have no one in this spot for him to shoot. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. So, let's put our scout in this forest. It will give him a little bit of range defense, just in case the renegade decides to move down this way. And our, our, my scout can move back if necessary and still shoot. I think we'll put our slinger on the hill to give him plus one range. Hopefully, he'll be able to deal with this thief if he moves up. And if the renegade moves two spaces up and leaves himself just completely exposed, that's even better for us. We'll be able to kill him with our scout and our slinger. And just in case I... Oh, just in case I place him correctly, and the AI decides to move down here with all its units, we'll leave a spearman down here to assist our hero. Yeah, if I left the spearman here, he would have been shot by this renegade, so good thing I noticed that. Another interesting feature of, the, of this battlefield is this singular swamp in the center. The AI won't really want to move in this, and if he tries, of course, his movement will end if I'm not adjacent to it. So this is acting kind of like a big pillar, and we will probably be looking to move around it rather than fight in it. And of course, I don't want to be in it either if I can help it. So let's see if I'm right. My guess is that this guy's going to go forward too, this guy will move forward too, the thief will probably move two up here, and he will probably move either here... Or here. The smart move for him to be would be to move himself here. Because if he moves here, I'll kill him. Alright! They moved exactly as I thought they would. And he's dead. This guy is dead. Oh, right. Uh, something else we should always do is look at all the units to make sure none of them are like a high level unit with a surprising ability. It would suck, for example, if this guy had double shot. I almost never see it. And the unit would have to be a higher level unit to have double shot, but renegades can gain it. These guys do not have forest walk, and the thief is just level 1, so this won't be too difficult. Let's start with the great shooting. I'm interested in taking this guy down as quickly as I possibly can. Mostly, if, in fact, uh, okay. So, it's mostly because of our, our slinger. He has no ranged defense, so even though he only does now 3 damage... It's enough to be really annoying if I want to keep the Slinger alive. And I would like to keep him alive if possible. As for these Brigands, I don't want to fight both Brigands at once if I can avoid it. And the Brigands 2 movement doesn't actually get them in melee range with my army. So they can just stay there. I'm not going to move these guys up at all. I'm sorry, they can stay this here. So I will just stay here with my army. And this thief is too far away to, to hurt me at the moment. So we'll go ahead and Sling Stone this guy. And that's good. Let's end our turn. Interesting. They're threatening this slinger heavily. They want him to die. Unfortunately, they've left this guy exposed and all alone, so we can go ahead and kill him very easily. Remember that the spearmen have spears? Well, let's move him up one. Spend a little more stamina to actually throw that spear at this guy. Since he's not under any immediate threat, except for this brigand himself, we'll throw a spear here as well. With six hit points left, he's within killing range of our scout, who will go ahead and shoot him. And now this guy, 
can be hit by both of these brigands, but all it takes is for me to move him back one space, and then we can't be hit by either. I think we'll move him back. Actually, let's have him let's have him use a sling stone. Begin wigging the thief. All right, that's a fine bunch of movement you have there. We can kill their their thief though with our scout easily enough. Our slinger can move back one. Let's move him back uh, two spaces. We don't have to attack this guy at the moment. We'll move our spearman here to threaten him. And this guy one up. My guess is that with the threat, because he wants to move down, he will actually probably take the hill for extra melee defense. And he does. I've thrown both my spears already, so I cannot actually kill him with my ranged attacks. The question now is, do I actually want to try to kill him in melee? He does have one more defense there, but I don't think it will be enough to really save him. And his counterattack will be lowered once I once I weaken him. Alternatively, we can just move away to get a guarantee easy kill. And I think the guarantee is probably the smarter move. We'll move this spring here. Move you down one. Move our slinger down two. And move this guy down two. We're now outside the range of his melee attack. And we'll hurt him some more. Alright, it's over. We have points left. Well, let's make sure we just weaken him. Oh, or kill him outright. Well done, Slinger. Plus one magic. And I think we'll grab Pathfinding. Stamina. Stamina. Okay, let's see what the next battle is I have planned after I go ahead and purchase buildings, etc., etc. Let's purchase a granary. Shiraz, your equipment is not yet degraded, so we don't have to move you back. You gain another spell slot, but I don't think we need to pick up another spell. So I think instead we'll just have you, uh, Savage Woods is going to be tough. I forgot you could get Savage Woods next to you. This will be things like wolves and fairies. Maybe if we're really unlucky, there'll be a single dryad guarding that location. Actually, no, that's a tier 2 location, so we definitely don't want to even make the attempt. So Shiraz, oh, I don't like any of this stuff. Hmm, well, you're kind of going to have to go and fight the uh, Barbarians, so we'll send you down there. Now, as for Tira, she's doing the same battle that we just did against four Brigands, and probably the same layout, and even in the same position. Of course, the terrain is completely different for this battle. So my guess is that these are all going to be lower level enemies, and we shouldn't have to worry about them overly much. So this guy, remember, he can move one space and shoot one, and still shoot, so he'll be able to move one, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So I don't want to stay where I'm currently located. We want to reshift, we want to shift our pikemen. And I think this is probably a good spot for our pikemen, since the brigands may come in the swamp to attack them, which is perfect, because they'll have less defense and less counter uh, attack. Our Slinger can probably take the forest. And our hero... I shame I can't take this so... I love to engage them as quick as possible. We could leave our hero in the forest and take maybe an early hit from this guy. Let's do that. Let's see if we can tempt him to attacking our leader. My plan is to move this guy... Uh, maybe, maybe this guy up one space. Leave this guy here. Our Slinger can assist by plinking away at the life of any brigands that come down here. The thief will probably move in this direction. And the Renegade will probably move up one and begin shooting at our leader. Where our leader can go ahead and charge into them without too much difficulty. The question is, will both brigands come down on this side? I think they probably will. I think one's going to go one, two. And the other will move just like one behind him. Let's see if I'm right. Oh no! Okay, they're all coming up in this direction. Let's take a look at them. Make sure none of them have any nasty surprises. Oh, Jesus! This is a level... 12 flippin' Renegade. So he's got he's got double shot, and he ignores one point of the enemy's range defense when he shoots. Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm tempted to leave my hero here in order to make him take so, two shots at him. He'll probably do it. If I move you up one, he might come down here and shoot you. 
And that means next turn he'll try- he'll definitely do a double shot. I don't want my hero taking a double shot unless he's in this terrain. Normally I would move my hero up one, but now that I see the strength of this renegade, I don't want to do that. I think we'll shift our pikemen like this. Our hero will stay put, tempting the renegade to shoot him twice. When he does that, his stamina will be significantly lower. He'll have just three stamina left, and I can practically ignore him for the rest of the combat. Nope, he's moving down to shoot at my pikemen. Well, if he's going to do that... One, two, three, four, five... He'll start shooting my slinger next turn. But I think I'll be okay with that. He could also stay where he is and shoot my hero, but I don't think he'll do that. Let's end our turn. Okay, now the good news is that he's only got four stamina, so we can't use double shot anymore. We will take the hill. Begin hurting that thief. And even though he's in the forest, he does have less range defense than the brigand does. Click him a little bit. Hurt that guy. And we'll move you up one, and that will be good. Taking lots of damage. And of course, he's not going to attack at all because he doesn't want to automatically die. Let's come with this pikeman. This pikeman can now block for our slinger. Our hero can take the forest and kill the annoying thief. Uh, he's almost out of stamina, so he's as good as dead. Unfortunately, this one gentleman caused me to take a, quite a bit of damage because I positioned my warrior in such a way to try to take hits, and he took a lot. Uh, okay, he's out of stamina now. I can actually move you up and throw a sling. Well, the good that does. So that did not go very well. That did not go very well. But I think we did the best we could. But the only other thing I could think of is maybe leaving a pikeman in that forest to start. Since he might have taken a, sh a uh, double shot instead of our... Well, the guy just kept moving and plinking away at my units, which is a smart thing to do rather than use double shot. In this instance, at least. Well, we did level, plus one health. Let's grab Weapon Master. Hit point, hit point. And Darius, you are badly hurt, and you have a injured slinger. You have no spells, and then what's surrounding you will be a little tough. So I need to pull you back, and you can learn maybe some spells? No, we don't have the money for that. Let's pull you back home anyway, because I think I have a slinger. In our garrison? I do. So we can replace you with a fresh slinger. We might be able to kill the brigands here with our army, but walking into that with a very wicked slinger is not a good idea. And so this is an example of a wasted turn. I took too much damage in that fight. I must now retreat and get a new unit. And unfortunately for this player, he doesn't have enough money to afford anything either. Well, it can't be helped. We just have to move back. And we have a bad battle one more time, and this time with a commander. And this time the AI has seen the hill and doesn't want to... Oh, and he would have to start in swamps. So he doesn't want to set up over here. I do notice that we have a wall of blocking terrain in the way. We just kind of have to hope that this renegade also isn't level 12. I think our commander will sit this battle out since he's a little wounded. I will do something like this. I want, definitely want to keep my units in the forest for as long as possible, so we take less damage from this Renegade. Unfortunately, the Slinger will probably get plinked heavily, but we'll see how well we can do. So this wall will slow them down, unless they have forest knowledge, which the Brigands could have, but I think they'll still be slowed. And if the first one comes into range up here, we can throw both our Spears at him and our Sling Stones and probably eliminate him. The tricky part will be dealing with the Renegade. Especially because he'll really want to attack this slinger out in the open. As for this spearman, I'll keep you over here just in case one brigand decides to come up towards our commander. While he might be able to hold his own against a brigand, a good solid hit will reduce him to 4 hit points, and then any wayward attack might finish him off. So I don't really want... I want him close to the combat, but preferably not in it. As for battle lanes, this is a possibility, because we have these two hills and these two lakes... 
splitting the enemy group. Oh, you actually moved into the uh, the swamp. All right. If he moves one, he can hit this slinger next turn. Let's begin. Actually, first let's begin by looking at them. Yeah, a little leveled, all of them. This guy's level 5 and has 10 attack. I will definitely want him to die. This guy has steel ammo, 2 points in it, so he leveled that twice. And he, he picked up a point... Really? He, he picked up this? Oh, no, he, he has that naturally. All right. Oh, he picked up a point of backstab. Not going to help him. We're going to kill this guy easily enough, and the thief's uh, ammo steel won't come in that useful. It's, again, just this renegade I'm really worried about. Let's begin... <laughs> And drain a little bit of his stamina. We're still going to take a range 6 attack strength. Oh my god. I think we have to move this slinger away. He can move 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I don't need the hill as much as I need him to not take that big giant hit. At least this guy is in the forest. So he'll have some range defense. So let's move you back a space. You will move up one. And that will be good. Okay, let's drain even more stamina off this guy and make him useless for the rest of the combat. Now as for this jerk, if I move this spearman back one, he'll he'll probably move two to threaten the spearman or a slinger. He, though he will honestly want to kill the slinger. I think we will move you up one, Mr. Spearman. I love to take a hill, but obviously that's not going to happen. And I don't want to even take the counterattack. So I think we'll just throw a spear at him. Next, I really do want to kill this brigand since he does 10 melee attack damage. Now he does only 5. The question now is do I want to begin weakening the thief with a little bit of damage? Or do I want to start working on this guy a little more? I think we'll start working on this guy. We could kill this one, but with that greatly reduced damage, I'm not as worried about him. Alright, that works. So we can kill him with a good solid hit here. In fact, we want to move toward the Renegade. We didn't kill him. I have a magic spark saved for this, lo this occasion. As for the Thief... With no range of defense and him out in the open, let's at least weaken him with, no, with a range attack. His dodge is activated and he's gained a little bit of extra range defense. He has three now. That said, we can still hurt him a little bit more. Oh, very nice. And we can kill him. And without any real stamina, this guy is no longer a threat and we can kill him as well. Well done, guys. Took a bit of damage there, though, which is not very good, but I think I did the best I could do. Plus, a command, that's amazing for a level 2 commander. That is amazing. I think we'll grab discipline. We'll give you a hit point. Hit point. Range attack. Stamina metal. Hit point. Stamina. And now, everyone, I will be back to show some higher level combats. Okay, everyone. Here we are. Uh, we're going to hope this is a high level battle, and if it is, it gives me a chance to think on screen about if we'll be strong enough to do this battle, and show you some other tips, or give you some other tips, which could help you before you walk into a battle, just in general. Alright, so. Our hero is saying the enemy stands no chance. So this means he is confident that, the he that he, the hero, can remain alive at the end of this battle. That's a good indicator if you can win or not, but it doesn't tell you how easy the battle will be. Cast the wrong spell, put yourself in the wrong position, and you will lose the fight anyway, despite the heroes saying that you will win. This is also true if you're fighting giant slugs. If you fight, like, 12 giant slugs, that's a tough fight, no matter what your army consists of. So keep that in mind. Our slugs are tricky. In any case, uh, I can see the enemies are 11 in number. That's quite a few. The enemies, though, themselves look like they're a healing group. Plus, probably at least one powerful unit with the Witcher. 
Now next, in my instance, I have not played this multiplayer game for like... I think it's been almost two months since I last fired up this multiplayer game. So as such, I don't remember what our hero has. And maybe you may also want to remember, or at the very least, um, you might want to re-equip your hero with different pieces of gear, if you brought any with you. Maybe you walked into a battle with your scout, and you just remembered, oh crap, right, his arrows are almost destroyed. But you were smart, and you gave that hero an extra set of arrows just for this occasion. Well, in that case, you can go to the hero screen, where you can actually re-equip your hero with different pieces of gear that you brought along. In my instance, this gives me a chance to look at my equipment, because it's been a long time. Oh my god, that's amazing. Uh, it gives me a chance to look at my equipment, since it has been a long time since I've played this hero. And I swear I'm not doing this to show off, I'm just doing this because I don't remember what my hero has on him. Lots of stamina on him. Tons of stamina. Decent defenses. Not amazing for a warrior, but still good. An incredible amount of attack damage. Oh my god! That is, that is amazing. Okay, so our Dark Knight, being level 15, has some good pieces of equipment on him. Given that I see a Witcher, I think I actually want my defense high. This is not a battle against a tier 1 guard of halflings, where I just want to run them over as quick as possible and heal any damage we take. This army is, will be tricky to reach without having to fight the Witcher and the Guardsmen. So I'm going to want some more defense. My spike shield, for example, should remain on us. Without it, my defense has dropped to a, to a level I'm not too confident in that we can win without taking significant damage. Despite the fact I have some decent weaponry here, I think the Sword of Sandy would increase my attack by a little bit more? 12 versus... 2 more attack. And I gain Battle Frenzy, which would help me do even more attack damage and would I take a significant amount. But, I think I'd rather just hold on to my spike shield and go in that bat into the battle with these things instead. And this is not an evil group, so I do not need to equip my Sword of Justice. I also get a chance to look at my spells really quick to see what spells I might want to cast. We'll probably have to start with Stone Skin or Swiftness. You can also look at your units as well, just to remember in case you've forgotten. In any case, I think Trivus is strong enough to do this battle. So let's attack. Okay. Okay. This is going to be tricky. So, as before, let's stop and look at the, ter at the terrain to start. We have a large portion of the battlefield dominated by this line right in the middle, which I will need to find a way to cross if I actually want to reach the enemy. This will slow my hero down a bit. He'll be forced to at least step one step onto the hills without being able to do anything else. We could move him down one and cast a spell and then onto the hill. It all comes down to if this unit has Forged March. Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I think we can spend the one turn it takes to move and then cast a spell. We could even move onto the hill and then cast a spell on a hill. That way we don't use as much stamina. I think I like that. I think we'll have our hero stay exactly where he's located... He'll cast a spell on himself, and the next turn he'll move onto the hill. This way, my intention is to get his defense up with that stone skin spell, and then move onto the hill in order to get even more defense and counterattack. And from this hill, he should be a match for any of these enemies who decide to come after him. The enemy consists of three units that have a ranged attack that is magical in nature. So I should see, oops, no, no, if I have any of my units have a good magic resistance. Eight! That's a good amount. We're going to stick our Witch Hunter here, because they will probably shoot at him for almost no damage, or at least it tempts them to do so. Yeah, he'll, he'll take almost no damage from these guys' attacks. I think the strongest might be a strength 9 or 10 on the Preacher, but he can take a few uh, two damage attacks in a turn. I think he'll be okay. Plus, on a hill, we, have to, we can move him up one, and then he can threaten these monks with his own uh, crossbow. Well, he doesn't have much damage, he will be able to make them use their ammo, healing themselves. This is something that I guess I should point out. The AI likes healing 
healing if it can, and will prefer to do that when possible. By shooting these monks, they will probably heal themselves, and that will really work out for me. That will give me a chance to that they'll lower the amount of ammo that they'll be using and keep my other units alive. Next, I'm pretty sure a preacher has a massive ranged attack range. I think his range is something like six or seven normally. So he'll have at least a range seven attack on this hill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I probably want my weaker units to stay back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I'm mistaken, and they have shorter range, though in the worst case scenario, they'll just contribute to battling these weaker enemies here, which is fine. If I'm wrong, he has greater range, we'll take a big hit. But I think we'll be okay with that. Our slug can stay here. With 43 hit points, I'm hoping he can take a few hits from this preacher. And our shaman is here for support. Finally, let's think about what the, what the AI will do on its starting turns. The Witcher will cast Igni, and he'll probably cast it either on my Witch Hunter or on my Hero to start. And I'll have a healer here, so that will be damage we'll just have to eat. The, the, he'll move up. The rest of you will probably stand, stay still. He'll move either one to the forest or onto the hill, and he'll follow suit. And the AI put a swordsman all the way down here for some reason. That was a bad placement on their part, but the AI really wanted these hills. I think we'll be okay. Let's get started. I think, again, my objective will be to keep these units away from taking massive amounts of damage from their range attacks. While we soak those ranged attacks with this guy, or make them use ammo by healing. And um, our warrior will try to tank all of this for us. Okay, he has a range of eight. Let's uh, move you back two, and you move one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Next. Our sh shaman, our witch, witch doctor, what are you called? Whisperer? Our whisperer can begin slowing someone down, but it won't drain their stamina. I think I want to move our hero here, just as I had planned. Let's get him onto the hill and begin to threaten these enemies. Our slug can spit him to begin making them use ammo to heal while you move up. And will plink their healer for a tiny bit of damage in order to make them heal him as well. Okay, let's use Stone Skin. This guy's going to be annoying, because he's going to move up and use Shield Bash. We'll just kill him instantly next turn with my hero, though. Over here, let's begin making them use some of those, um, some of those ammos to heal. And that's fine. These guys will just stay back. It's a shame in a way they won't contribute to this battle, but the only thing they'll do is take massive damage, and I don't need them to do that. Oh, he has Dispel. Good for him. Let's move up here and take this hill. And just kill that guy, so we don't have to worry about Shield Bash anymore. That was a mistake. I should have slowed his movement down. We need to kill the Witcher this turn, or we're going to start taking uh, taking losses as he begins attacking your other more fragile units. I think we can practically kill him with this hit, but I like to weaken him a little bit first, just to make sure we get the guaranteed kill. Good. That protects my weaker units. <laughs> ha 
and he knows he's going to die. That defense won't even help him whatsoever. We'll keep our hero here, and he'll use Swiftness on himself. Swiftness lets him move one extra movement, and begins to letting him recover his stamina. Over here, we are out... We are out of ammo, but if I move up, we'll take a hit from this swordsman. We'll spit at him instead. Keep hurting this gentleman. He is out. Actually, is he resting this turn? I can't remember. I'll move you up one, and you will just rest. Let's start killing all their other units. You can stay. You can rest. Uh, there's no reason really to move these, these, these units up. It'll take a while for me to reach this guy. With meditation, they'll recover their ammo. So we'll just pull you back. so worried about dying and we could kill him maybe with two hits we won't kill him with one hit though we'll let him sit there he's not posing any type of threat the AI does that it moves up and attacks because it's desperate to lower my stamina unfortunately for it I'm not gonna run out anytime soon Yeah, it's over. Well done. No significant damage taken. Now we can move you two up if I so wish. We'll use some armor on this guy and give him the hill. And well done, army of mine. We have won this without too much damage damage. We can heal a little bit of damage, but we did take. Uh, we don't need to actually attack him. Oh, sorry, we do. And he's dead. I think that went well. We didn't fight the enemy army all at once, as you noticed. When the enemy got close to my units, we defended them with our hero. Ah, I should have pointed this out as well. When you use a warrior, the AI will often just try his, its best to ignore it. And instead, kill as many of your other units as it possibly can. If you want to keep them alive, you don't have to, because a strong warrior will be enough to handle an entire army by himself. But it's useful to keep these units alive as a distraction, if nothing else. So I tend to try my best to position my warrior in such a way that I can defend my units if possible. Um, I guess Weapon Master... Once one of my units reaches around level 4 or 5 and the option to grab morale comes up, especially when another skill is not as... it's about equal, I don't want my Whisperer ever having to attack something in melee. That's not his job. So in this case, I'll give him morale. Hey, that's a pretty nice helmet. Anyway, let's... Uh, actually, let's see what the next locations are that I encounter here. Oh, holy crap! Speaking of giant slugs, nine giant slugs for Ilthin to fight. Well, I don't remember what he has either. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Okay, he's a ranger, and Jesus, his ranged attack is 27. That's amazing. Oh, he is three and one, Master. No, ma no wonder. Do I want to do massive amounts of single damage, or do I want to use Blast to do AoE damage? Ooh, that's tempting, too. My range is 6. What's our range with this? Also 6. So this is an interesting choice for us. We can probably one-hit kill a Slug, depending. Or we could do groups of AoE damage to groups of Slugs, obviously. To kill them all, all at once. This is a tricky choice. I don't know which one I want to do. Slug's magic resistance tends to be two. Their range defense tends to be two or three. Hmm. 
We have a single hunter's vine that'll be really useful for slowing a group of them down. And we have ways to recover my stamina. We can also knock one asleep if I wish. Um, I think we'll stick with uh, 27 damage. What's our what's our fire rod do again? 19. So it's quite a bit less, but we affect groups of them. Will the slugs go first, or will I go first? I think I will go first. Oh, in addition, that's right, this is a scout. Okay, so let's talk about this really quick as well. So, something your scouts have that can be very helpful in combat is their scouting skills. The first ability will let you peek into a location after you examine it, and you will get to see the levels of the units that are there, and then possibly use one of the other actions. Let's show you. So if Ilthin goes as in scouts, I can see that there are nine giant slugs and their levels are level 10 through 14. Let's say that this was the battle that we had just done earlier. Um, the battle against that witcher group. We could have seen that there was one witcher and we've seen his level. We would have seen there was one priest, two monks. We would have gotten their numbers. That is very, very useful. And given this guy is a ranger, and looks like a high-level ranger, it's also very cheap to actually use him to scout such. So I, can, I recommend you do that, especially with the starting scout, and if you have a decent amount of money... Good God. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, lying around to help you. I don't know which of these I want to use. My army has a beater with it. Oh, I, I started talking about scouting and then I stopped. The, the other options for scouting are false alarm... Poison the water and create panic. False alarm lowers the entire enemy army's stamina by about, I think it's like half, but it might only be like five or six points of stamina. Poison the water will inflict a poison effect on all the enemies stationed there. They'll lose three hit points each turn for three turns. Finally, there's create panic. This lowers the enemy's morale by, I think, like four or five points bringing them just to the point where they will begin suffering combat penalties. Because I am a ranger, and in particular a pathfinder, our sabotage efficiency is greater. So we will actually greatly reduce enemy stamina. It will be lowered by something like 10 points or so. The poison will last, I think it lasts for 4 turns and does 4 points of damage each turn. And the morale reduction is something more like 7 or 8 points of morale loss. It is fantastic. Yeah, very, very nice. I think we will make this a little tougher for me. And our ranger will use the strongbow with the heavy arrows. There are 9 slugs, and we have 10 shots. I have the ability to recover 2 ammo with magic weapon, but that's it. So, we have to make sure we kill a slug with a single shot each time. Let's go ahead and attack. It doesn't surprise me that we're starting first. We have one master three ranks, and we also have um, much more call it three ranks. Uh, it looks like the range defense upgrade, whatever it was called, agility, or whatever that ability is. I'm babbling. Oh my god, we actually have a thirty-one attack because our morale is so high. All right, so we're fighting slugs. Uh, we should stop and look at the terrain as well. Slugs will have plus one range on the hills, which means that they'll have at least four range. I don't know if slugs can get an increase to their range as a skill up, but we should check all the slugs before we fight to make sure that that's not the case, or I'll have to worry a little bit more than normal. For my needs, I only have, well, I have five units with a ranged attack. The assassin will practically be useless this battle, because he I don't want him getting close to nine slugs. He'll be killed immediately when they all spit at him, or he'll die next round just automatically from all the poison that will damage him. We definitely don't want any of my units to be focused fired by the slugs if we can avoid it. I think that we will want a hill with our hero. And this hill is more in the center of the battlefield than this one. So our hero can probably reach out and tag most of the slugs from this position. Our assassin will probably stay out of the fight and stay here in this forest. Our whisperer with a range of Five, we'll put him here. And I think... Actually, we'll, we'll leave him back here. 
we will put our lizard men here. Lizard men have a special ability called interception, and this allows them to take hits for other enemy units. If our if I misjudge a situation and one of these units gets attacked by a ranged attack, the lizard men will elect to use interception automatically and take the hit instead of these more fragile units. We can then move the lizard men back. He can he'll suffer poison damage. His regeneration will help him uh, through it, and this will let me take a single hit. I think with this other hill, we'll give it to our Lizardman Archer, and we'll give this hill to this Shaman of ours. We'll move our Bog Warrior here to protect our units, and I think this will work out well for us. Actually, let's do something like this. We have two Lizardmen to protect my, war my hero here, and a Bog Warrior to help protect our Executioner. Let's start and see where this... Oh, and as for the battlefield itself, I wasn't even looking at this because I don't intend to move up. We have a little bit of funneling that can happen. The, the enemy army will either go up this way or down here. My chief concern is keeping this side of my army alive, if I can. This side, I'm not as worried about because I can Hunter's Vine and slow this enemy's army down and then pick apart this side. This side also has more hills, so the slugs will be able to get within range faster on this side of the battlefield. Now, I think it is in our interest to raise a false alarm in this case. With less morale, the enemy's defense and attacks will drop. Slugs do not have hills knowledge to my, to my recollection, so they will lose stamina as they crawl forward and try to gain other hills. So they may run out of stamina entirely before they reach my lines, especially because this is a... Uh, a high-level ranger, a pathfinder. So we will raise the false alarm. And I wish I was actually using the wand, because we could wand them right here, and that would cripple these five slugs. All right, anyway, let's look at the slugs and make sure we're not going to be surprised. I'm looking in particular at their range, and if they have any special medals. Oh, okay. This slug has plus one range to its attack. And that is the only one that has increased range. So this slug is thankfully in the back, and not as much of a threat. As for the other abilities on slugs, I'm gonna guess that I won't have to worry about it, because I'll be killing the slugs, hopefully, before they ever reach my lines. Alright, let's start. So... I could start with a Hunter's Vine to lock these ones in place. But I think I'll let them get a little closer first before I do so. With a hero doing 31 points of damage, it's just barely not enough damage to kill any one of these slugs. We'll have to get lucky and hope that we get a higher roll for our attack damage. But, combined with this... Archer's range attack, we can kill a slug a turn. Oh, actually, I think our ranger has magic attack on his arrows, doesn't he? He does! So never mind. He can kill a slug a turn. Well. So we're doing 31 range attack? Does that include the magic damage? I don't know if it does. Well, we'll get the guaranteed kill on that one first. I think we'll wait till next turn, and we'll use a curse on this slug as well to slow uh, to reduce the amount of damage we'll take from it, because its range is plus one. Okay, they're creeping closer. This one now has a range of five. One, two, three, four, five, and can reach us. If I don't want this guy taking a point of damage, I'll need to move him back. I think we should probably slow the slugs down. So we will use a Hunter's Vine, and I think we'll use it here. This will stop them from doing anything under... Well, actually, they can still spit if they have the range, but and in fact, we're within range of this slug, so we should move you back one space. This slug won't be able to help its brothers. It's going to have to come down here now instead. Let's begin shooting the slugs we want to die next. We're going to want one of these two to perish. Since this one has more stamina, we'll tag that one for death next. 
Well, the units will stay put. Actually, actually, no. Let's tempt these two slugs to shoot this bog warrior. Or, oh, no. Just the bog warrior. We'll move him up one. This slug will take the opportunity to shoot at him. And he can totally take that hit without too much trouble. This slug will crawl up one and next turn we'll kill it. We can move this bug warrior away and then deal with this slug who is not rooted. Alright, let's do that. Oh no! Oh, that was a misclick! That was a misclick! And this is a huge problem now. Oh, come on, game. I hate you so much. I hate you. All this is now ruined. All of it. So, you can misclick, as I often do, because the game decided to select this guy instead of this guy, which I didn't, which I failed to click on. I now have some big choices to make. I don't want to lose my hero, and I can't bring all my forces to bear, but we're going to try to kill this slug with as much as we possibly can muster. And it's just barely not enough. So someone's got to move up there and take a crap ton of ranged attacks. Or, I guess we could just take the single range attack and then deal with this horrible mistake next round. That is so bad. Okay. Let's kill this slug. And this one. Those are the only ones within range of us. We need to get our Bog Warrior back. He's taking 9 damage next turn. He is out of the fight. Let's do this to still protect our hero. The rest of my units will stay put. Actually, we should begin weakening these ones. And we will curse this one. Okay. You will live. Just barely, but you will live. I just need to tag each one once to make sure our hero can kill it. This one has to die. This was the one that has the increased range. Oh, no. We, did we kill that one? Oh, is, no. This one still has increased range. It's just not on a hill any longer. Let's pull our Whisperer back. Actually, no. Let's, let's leave him there at the moment. He's not, with it. He's not threatened. Kill that one. Wound that one. You, sir, can rest. Uh, you don't need to rest, so just sit there. One, two, three, four. You can actually reach this guy, but our lizardman should take that hit for you. Okay. Let's pull you back here. You move back one. And unfortunately, we're within range of several of them this turn. You are also out of ammo, sir. Let's get you out of the way so we can begin using our Shaman instead. Um, we can distract the slugs by giving them a target. I'd like my Whisperer to not be that target. Let's kill this one. We'll move you... Uh one into the swamps where this one can shoot you you move one away and you'll move one up on the hill to bring your weapon to bear okay that's everything's okay so far this guy's in danger but not quite dead yet let's support him we'll shoot this guy and then kill it my other units can just stay put this guy can probably oh I don't know if we can take another hit. Let's move you one away. Ah! He ran out of stamina. Perfect. So despite my misclick, we still won. Can I cast any healing spells to help my army out now that it's over? We could use sleep. Let's use sleep on him. The reason I'm doing this is because my two units that took heavy damage can just rest. They're lizard men, so they'll regenerate. 
two hit points each round, and that'll make up for the misclick I did. So overall, despite my panicking, I end up doing this battle without any significant losses. And it's over. Well done, Tim. Thank goodness you were able to recover from that. But as you saw, I picked off the enemies when they were a threat. And I used the fact that they would shoot my army, a unit if they could, to my advantage to delay multiple slugs from engaging us all at once. That way, we take greatly reduced damage and am able to shuffle my army around to prevent it. In this case, those main guards were also really helpful because I knew they would act as bodyguards. And for victory, we'll give you one range attack. Border guards? I already have border guards. These guys are no good. Why, why, what is this garbage? What is this garbage? Nine slugs giving you one contract with border guards. Come on, what's up with that? Alright, everyone. So, um, I will be back when I have another battle to show you. Okay, everyone. Let's see what battles are waiting for us over here. Oh. Uh, can Jubei win this battle? I don't think he can defeat a Paladin. I've never seen that unit before. There's also a Knight and a Champion. And there's 12 total enemies. He might win. They don't have many healers here. Let's take a look at Jubei's army before I make this decision, shall we? Okay, Jubei is an Arc Druid and does significant amounts of ranged attack damage with our with our wand. That is very handy to know. His army, though, is pretty weak. I see a bunch of low-level units here, ones that haven't leveled very much. That means that I've been losing units consistently, especially because I don't see any medals on any of these guys. That's really bad for us. I do see some amazing, though, summoning spells here, which could turn the tide in our favor. The real question is, can I kill their paladin? Everything else won't be too difficult for me. Okay, let's give it a try. Jubei is not confident, and this is a lot of enemies. Twelve total enemies. We see ten of them listed here, so there's two more. Probably healers or low-level units. We will make the attempt. The good news is that we're starting first. The bad news is that this is a big open field. So the enemy will close with me very, very quickly. I think our best bet is to do something like this. Keeping my swordsman in the front. Some healers around in case I take any surprise damage. And our awesome looking spider up here as well. Now they have a champion and a knight. These units have a three movement that will be upon me very quickly. I'm nervous about them, but we can summon some elementals to help us with the, in the battle, I hope. I have never seen this guy before in my life. Wow, is he super strong. Three... Three movement, 25 attack and 25 counter attack. All right. He also has two priests. Oh, God. So there's tons of healing here to keep these units alive as they kill my very weak army. I think we should start by summoning one of my earth elementals. Alternatively, we can use Geyser to try to hit them for a good amount of damage, but their resistances are pretty decent. I don't know if I can wipe out their units with, with a Geyser spell. So let's go ahead and summon an elemental. I don't actually want to lose this unit. It might take a significant amount of damage from that paladin, but I want to put it in the way of their enemy, of my enemies. I think we'll put it... Uh, one, two, three, one second. He will inflict almost 30 points of damage if I put my guy here. 
right now, none of these units can reach me. I think we have to summon it here. Now I know an Earth Elemental has Earthquake, which will do 12 points of physical damage to everyone on the battlefield. And armor protects against damage, but only partially. It will be enough to probably kill the Monk, the Healer, both their Crosswomen, and heavily damage everything else, oh well, all their, uh, basically, non-Knights. Let's have him do that. Oh. Darn it, we didn't quite kill the Monks or these Priests. Let's move you one, and you up two. We're gonna try to shoot this guy next turn. Everyone else will stay put, so we don't take any needless attacks. Okay. Well, we can do that again! And I don't see why we should not do so. I brought another Earth Elemental. Let's put it here. And he will also use Earthquake. <laughs> And now all their supporting healers are wiped out. Now we just have the rest of this nonsense to deal with. Let's check them now to see if any of them have forced march. And none of them do. If I move you back one, you won't take any damage from this guy. But you also won't inflict any. Ah, uh, this stinks. They all have first strike, don't they? Ah, oh, that's terrible, except for this guy. I think we have to move this guy back. Move the healer up one. And let's see how much damage we take. Okay. Not terrible. We can kill their champion and their knight this turn. I'm a little worried about their paladin, but I can probably just root him in place. Let's do that. And in fact, he'll die next turn, as long as I keep my wizard alive. He won't be able to reach me because he's rooted. I just have to also stay away from him. I don't see me keeping both of these swordsmen alive, unfortunately. But we will make the attempt to do so. Let's first move you one away. I definitely don't want you staying there. Do you guys have shield bash? You do not. Ah, uh, darn it. I should have used shield wall on you last turn. Yeah, I don't see how I'm keeping you alive. Let's heal this guy and send him one down. We're shuffling our army around a tad. You have shield bash. I don't know how useful that will be, though. Let's move you two. You one. All right. This guy can reach my leader and kill him. So I need to be sure that I stop him from doing that. Our spider here can web him, or this guy, to keep one of them in place. Let's wait and see how much damage we do. I can also throw my dry, in fact, let's do this anyway, into the front, just to make sure if I misplay this or misclick, that this guy won't charge up and one-hit kill my hero. Which he can't do, but he'll severely, severely hurt him. Alright. Let's try hurting... This guy? We can't use Crushing Blow because we moved. I'm not going to kill him. He's at 27 hit points. We also only do 11 points of damage. Still, we'll do something to him. Our spider will do a little more. And he's not looking so healthy anymore. We'll shield bash him as well. I think that will do. Can we kill him? Not with a range attack. 
It's not gonna work. How about you? Kill him. Take away more stamina off this guy. And I think we will web... ...him. Okay. We will shift the army down again, like this. And we will continue to shoot the paladin. He's almost dead, thank goodness, and he's still rooted so he won't be able to contribute to this battle. I think we can kill him this turn? We can then use our spire to web the Swords Master. And damage him without too much worry. Unfortunately, we're going to lose this guy to this one. And I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. I still have to kill the Paladin. But I should kill him with our spider. Yes. Let's... Oh! He does not have first strike. Yep, we can kill him with the spider. This will let me actually use my wizard to kill this guy. And now this one can be webbed and killed in short order. Or maybe not so short order. All right, short order. That went really well, all things considered. I think we did well. Unfortunately, when it comes to giving you advice for using a wizard, I can't really do it, other than because there's so many spells. And I can't even tell you what to go for, because it's all situational. I can say this at least. Use the best spells you can for the situation you find yourself in. Confu I think we had confusion with this guy? We have confusion? I don't I don't even know. I think that was a different hero. Uh, in, in any case, uh, I think we did really well. Summoning the Earth Elementals allowed us to kill all their supporting units. Thankfully, they were more concerned about healing their front line, the tiny bit of damage they took, rather than healing themselves, which is what they should have done. Had they healed themselves, we might not have killed all of them with this, like, an Earth Elemental, and then we would have had these units healing. Would have been much more difficult. As it is, losing two level five, a uh, level three, level five swordsman, whipping out all these enemies, that was pretty darn good. And we earned some decent loot for that as well. I think it makes sense that you would have pathfinding. You are a druid after all. Um, attack is useless on you, so you'll get more morale. First aid. Ooh, one strength or one range defense. I think we'll give you a strength. Uh, two stamina for you, little spider. One range attack. Oh my god! Flame and helmet! That looks amazing. Do we have any other battles to do? I don't think we do. We're in the event section now. Alright, everyone. Let's try doing one more battle. Okay, everyone. Ilthan here has discovered 12 enemies for him to self to kill. A Ghost Whisperer, a Wolf, and a Spirit Conjurer. Notice that Ilthan, though, doesn't really want to fight these enemies, saying they aren't worth the trouble. This is something you should consider when you use your heroes. Ilthan is a level 24 Pathfinder, and this battle is rather too easy for him. He will, he will decimate this army, and probably without losses. The, spirit, the only real danger will be the Spirit Conjurer's totems with their AoE magic damage, which could actually melt away a few of my Lizardmen if I'm not careful. But I don't really need to do this battle. In fact, Trimus is a level 15 Dark Knight, and I think he would be someone to do that battle instead. It'd be better for him to do it. So in this instance, I'm not going to do this fight. The battle could be better done by Trimus. It's more appropriate to his level. And you could benefit from the experience a little more than Ilthin could for doing this fight. 
I might have changed my mind if my other hero wasn't close by, or if I was desperate for money, but I am neither of these things. So we will just retreat. Interesting. Over here, my hero Velnar has found an army that he thinks is completely doomed. And normally, I would agree with him. Velnar is a strategist and is increasing the missile attack damage by two for his entire army. His initiative is increased by one. However, he doesn't have any magic attacks. And this has no way to deal with the ghost that I saw that's present in this army. He has no way at all to hurt it. None of his spells will let him hurt it. None of his spells change the attack damage of anything he possesses to magical. He doesn't possess magic arrows. There is nothing in his army at all. Oh my god, that's amazing for him. <laughs> Sorry. There's nothing in his army at all that will help him kill the ghost. As such, his army is doomed. He cannot win this fight. It is important that you re recognize this fact when you see it. Um, maybe, maybe our catapults could have done enough damage. They'd have to do 21 points of ranged damage to hurt a ghost. Our commander simply doesn't do that much damage by himself. He'll inflict, he might do one point damage to the ghost, but it will slowly annihilate our entire army. We won't be able to kill it. We could annihilate everything else. Actually, everything else would be tricky to fight, but fun. But unfortunately for us, this battle is too strong. So we had one battle that we discovered where it's better for a different hero to do it. We have this battle where even though our hero says the enemy's doomed, by looking at the enemies that are there and recognizing the fact that there will be at least one ghost which is practically impervious to range attack damage, we cannot win this fight. So we must retreat, even though Velinar thinks he can easily win. Okay, everyone. Uh, I'll be back again. I figured that would be interesting for you guys to, to see. Okay, everyone. I have a battle that should be fun to watch, though I don't know how interesting it would be from a tips and tactics point of view. But we're going to try this battle here. My hero, Orangol, is about to walk into a battle that has 12 enemy units, consisting of, bar of barbarians, berserkers, shamans, and a behemoth. Probably one of the strongest defenders that the barbarians can get on their side. Orangol is a necromancer. He is a level 26 master necromancer. He's looking pretty decent. His army consists of a various ghouls, a single skeleton of doom, a large amount of bone spearmen, a single archer, and bog champion for non... Uh, well, actually, we also have executioners as well in this army. And we have a black knight here as well. He's got a few summons if it comes down to it, but his, mostly his strength looks like it's going to be magic damage. He also has an amazing spell called Divine Light, which reduces the attacks of all enemies within two tiles to zero. Resistance protects only partially against this spell, and lasts four turns. Duration also increases with its concentration, so it's going to last seven turns here because of this, and Thaumaturgy will assist him with what he decides to do. I do have a uh, Wand of Darkness, which itself doesn't do much for him. He doesn't have any Wand Mastery, for example. He's not a Druid. But he also has a Sign of Unrest as an offhand item for Soul Stealing plus five, and Undead Summoning Power plus two. But I'd have to give up using my Summoner Staff, which I think is more important, given the high stamina cost of some of these spells. So I will not give these items to him. We'll keep him with the Summoner Staff for this fight. Let's try. An interesting setup here. The enemy will be able to speed toward me, but then will end up being delayed, because they'll have to funnel through swamps to reach me. These... Lakes will also provide a way that, that will split the enemy army up into two different sides. My lizard men can safely stay in the swamp without too much worry. Good God! <laughs> 26 attack and 20 counterattack for you. 
I want my non-range units to be able to move up quickly if necessary. My range units, I don't really need... Uh, my Bone Spearmen will do okay range damage. As you can see, I'm not increasing their, their range attack at all. So mostly they won't be too useful. Maybe they can pick off an enemy later on. But mostly it's going to be figuring out a good location for my Divine Light after I begin trying to kill one or two of them off before they reach me. So I'm thinking... Yeah, I'm, they can start here. We could get our ghoul up one spot. That's useful. This guy could move one and start shooting. These guys can move up and get into better position. Our knight can swing out if necessary. Although I may want the knight over here instead. No, I think we'll be okay. And I need to be away from all of this nonsense. I think we should, we should stick ourselves here. Then we will have to travel through swamps or forests to reach our necromancer. Alright. This isn't that bad. This is by far the most dangerous thing that they have. I'm not going to read about it because we haven't found one of these yet in our normal game. But I should still know what this creature does. He cannot be webbed. He has armor piercing, so he reduces the armor of a unit by half. He damages the armor, so he reduces their armor by one whenever he attacks them. Crippling Strike means they can't run away from him once they're engaged, and he has Intimidation 3. Allowing the morale of the unit, they strike by three points. It won't help him against the... Uh, it doesn't really do much against the undead. He has decent defenses, but not the best. And 39 attack and 31 counterattack with 88 hit points. This guy is indeed a behemoth. We'll move our executioner up one. We'll move you up one. We'll move up. You will move up. And I think we should probably start by trying to kill several of their units. Or rooting them in place. This guy does it doesn't say he can't be rooted. It just says he can't be webbed. Oh. Impossible to entangle the unit. Oh, it says in a web. It doesn't say he can't be entangled. This gives us a good opportunity to check this. Let's use Hunter's Vine and see if we actually can root some of them in place. Ha 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 ha! That will eliminate these guys from the battle for a little bit. Our Black Knight can then move up a little bit. I think we'll move him... Uh, just... No, we should move him up again. Although we won't get the charge. I think we still do it. Okay, that's good for a start. We have stopped the enemy from reaching us with this squad, reducing the amount of them that we have to fight all at once. Can I kill one of them this turn? You could easily kill this one. Mr. Black Knight, but you'll take a big counterattack hit. Let's try killing that guy. We can use Celestial Thunder to greatly weaken him. Seventeen attack strength left. Yes, we can kill him with this guy now. He's by far the most dangerous thing here. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, we can probably kill one of these guys with our combined range attacks. And... Probably this ghoul. Can we actually kill him without needing that? Yes, we can. We can actually kill this guy just with this Skeleton of Doom. Or we almost could. Still, this Bone Spearman can get the job done for us. As for this guy, he's got 19 hit points. We might be able to kill him with a combined attack of all these guys. We'll give it a try. For this side, I think our Executioner can one-hit kill this guy. 
Let's make sure that he can do that. Still couldn't do it. But now he's dead. I don't need our bog warrior up there any longer. Just in case something unforeseen happens, we will pull him back to guard our hero. I'm so sorry, you're all still rooted in place. Let's go ahead and use a geyser on them next. That does make all of them angry, but they're all these berber these berserker guys are still rooted for four more turns. So I don't have to worry about them quite yet. With 20 damage, you should one hit kill this guy, and you can charge this one and kill him. Oh! Does he have round attack? Oh my god! He has mass attack! I didn't even realize my own unit had that! He attacks all enemies around him when he makes any attacks. That is incredible. Our ghoul took a little bit of damage. You can go ahead and eat. And this ghoul can... Actually, our executioner. Uh, just kill that guy. We run you up. And this is looking like it's over, everyone. That was actually fairly easy. That leaves only this enemy. We have to deal with him somehow. He has two more round. Uh, he'll be out of this at the end of next round. I do not have any blind spells or any way that I can actually reduce his attack strength to zero beyond Divine Shield. I like to not do that if I can get away with it. But I don't know what I can do. He's also got 21 points of stamina. Let's start with an atrophy. That will begin slowly sapping his stamina away. I'm going to want to be careful when I... It also reduces his movement, by the way, to one. Let's move away slightly. We'll begin trying to pick him apart with some range attacks. It's not going to work. His range attack strength is... Uh, his range defense is... Six. So we'll have to get very lucky to actually damage him at all. Okay. Fatigue still on him for nine more turns. Let's keep... Actually, is a... Hmm. Let's use Inferno. He's almost at half his hit points. We can definitely kill him by attacking him. I just, I'm not sure I want to take a, eat a 26 a point a, a counter attack. If I don't have to take it, I should try to avoid doing so. All right, here he comes. He's now freed up. If we want, if we want to kill him, we got to do it this round. And I'd like to do it without using 45 gems for Divine Light. To be fair, we have, I have plenty of gems. But I think we can go ahead and summon a demon to assist us here. Oh! I have to kill a unit to summon a demon, and it must be a living unit. I forgot about that. I don't feel like killing my highly metaled... Or not highly metaled. I don't feel like killing any of my living units for a demon. Let's lightning him. We'll sneak up on this side while my hordes move back a space. And I think we'll put a skeleton in his way. He doesn't have trample, so we can go ahead and waste an attack on this skeleton. And we'll just watch him do that. He's almost within kill. Actually, I think our Black Knight can kill him. It'll be really close. Let's Lightning Bolt him. And now he's dead. Took only a tiny bit of damage from that attack. And I think we set ourselves up well. We use our positioning correctly. We use the right spells to deal with the enemy to make them, to force them to fight us piecemeal. 
and we won. Had we had to fight everything all at once, I probably would have lost the majority of my army, if not everything. I would have had to rely on Divine Light if I didn't even have um, Hunter's Vine. So don't underestimate even those Tier 2 or even Tier 1 spells. All of them can be put to great use in a battle. I didn't even get to even use my Cadaver. Sorry, everyone. Let's look at what these guys can do. I guess range defense. All right, everyone. So I hope this was somewhat helpful. In later videos, I will go ahead and talk about at least all the tier one spells and which ones I consider, well, I give you my opinion, I guess, on some of them, and indicate which ones you might want to take with you. It's difficult, again, as I mentioned, to give advice as to what spells you want your, your casters to use because they're all very situational. Like, Hunter's Vine was amazing for that battle, but against other enemies, it might not be as good. And that said, uh, Geyser was helpful in getting everything angry, but I didn't kill anything with, with my force. In fact, I have a summon demon that I have no use for. I gotta put, like, a peasant in my army so I can summon one of these in the battle, should I desire it. In any case, um... Right, I hope this video was somewhat helpful to give you some ideas of what you should do. And we'll summon up again one more time. Always make the best use of your hero on your turn. Try to do battles which are very difficult for your hero to do. But that he can still win without losses. Preferably without taking any damage whatsoever, as you just saw Orangol do. That did. That battle would have been difficult for any of my other heroes. But our mage and his spells allowed me to do that without too much trouble. Remember that you want your low-level heroes, heroes to do the battles which are better suited to them. Trimus is going to come back up into this location and do the battle against those wolves that we saw earlier. In the meantime, I plan to have Ilthin go ahead and fight the enemy undead army, since he can equip his magic arrows and do magic damage to the ghosts, allowing him to actually kill them before they become a threat, while the rest of the army staves off the battles for the undead until he can help. He also has a few spells which will also be helpful against the undead just in general. So keep that in mind, go after battles that you know you can win, and keep in the back of your mind about the equipment they're using, what you're fighting, the units you're bringing with you, and the spells you have equipped. In combat itself, pay attention to your initial setup, look at the terrain, and try to delay, to delay the enemy from reaching you all at once. You want to fight them piecemeal, while in that same note, you bring your entire army to bear. Never underestimate the power of a good I think it's called a concave for your all your range attackers to bring all the weapons to bear against a single enemy, if necessary, for example. And try to use terrain to your advantage to slow down the enemies. I think that about sums it up, everyone. And hopefully the battles that I've done have given you some small insight as to how I do the battles and why I position the enemies that I do. Also, I occasionally make mistakes and lose armies and misclicks. Misclicks are practically, can be can be unrecoverable at times. So don't do what I did when I used Ilthin. Pay attention to the, to the unit you have selected before you click in random empty spaces. On that note, you probably should always click on units of your own if you want to select any other unit, or make sure you, you have escape, press escape to unselect things. Anyway, again, I hope this was helpful. If you need me to cover anything else when it comes to combat, let me know and I will do my best to do so. The next video, I think... Well, first off, it will be some time before I put together the next video. These two videos... Oh my god. These two videos took me a long time to put together. We're talking about a month. The next video will probably take me about that long to put together that one. I think we'll try talking about how to make the most efficient use on your turn. And talk about building structures and provisional buildings as well as guards. And some tactics about when you should and maybe should not be placing guards down. Alright, I'll see you in that video, everyone, and thank you for watching this one. Take care, everyone.